when exactly should you take profits? What's up, what's up everybody? Uh, it's Don Fran, and, and in today's video, I'm, I'm a little bit bigger than I usually am, stuffed down into a, a tiny corner. This one isn't really, uh, we don't need a chart for it. We're gonna talk about taking profits and, and when should you actually do it? We're gonna go over the saying, you never go broke locking in profits. Um, in this small series that I have, that I, I'm gonna go over popular sayings you've heard all over YouTube. So. I, I encourage you guys hit the subscribe button for me hit the subscribe button and the bell I talk about charts plays all day long uh, I'll talk about directional bias everything and in, in, in all my videos these particular ones they don't really have a bias these are a mindset check so um, a, 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 just a, a touch-up uh, or maybe something new get your brain working because you guys have all heard you never go broke locking in profits Especially now, I've heard everybody say that. But in the trading world, on YouTube, in social media, uh, I think Ricky Gutierrez is probably the one that they kind of pioneered or just kind of really blasted that out. He's got a big YouTube channel. Uh, he says it a lot. He actually says it with, with good intentions. But I think there is just a giant, glaring problem with this. That saying actually just irks my soul when I hear that. Um, and it's because... One, it's true. It's hard to go broke if you're just locking in money. The very, very problematic part of that is when you guys are locking in that money. You will, uh, let's, let's use a chart right now. Let's, you are bag holding as a trader, something from here to here. Now that's one trade, here to here. You, you got in here for whatever reason, right? VWAP, fundamentals, MACD. Uh, I drew the blue zone, so you just bought it. And, and you bag held. You have terrible habits, and you bag held. Okay, now that's down. Let's say you just bought one share. For, let's just get you a real example. We're not watching the futures contracts. Let's say uh, you bought at the morning highs, the worst possible time, 4.35. And you're down 18 bucks. Man, I suck at math sometimes. Yes, you're down 18 bucks. Okay. Depending on the trade, I mean, why are you down $18? You're down, that's a whole other video for a different discussion. But on that same token, you'll be uh, you'll be buying right here. You nailed the dip. Maybe you even bought right here. And it pushed up. You got one green candle. And you locked in $3. And you never go broke locking in profits. That's you just locked in three dollars while bag holding something else 18 so what you're doing and the full saying of that is you never go broke locking in profits last half as long as your winners are bigger than your losers yes um, you know it I can be directionally right 50% of the time okay now how I actually exit trades myself this is this is me now how I exit my trades because I don't like guessing the top. You always hear don't guess the bottom and those same traders will try to guess the top locking in profits. That sounds asinine to me. Absolutely stupid. You won't do one but you'll do the other. I like to bag hold the winners. So what I do is I actually trail things. I don't use an actual trailing stop. I put a stop loss in the green and I manually trail it and move it up on the candles. If it's going to keep going and it's on the gain train, so am I. When it turns around, I'm out very very strict rules of mine that would actually make that saying very true because you know I won't go broke I got my stop in the green there's a lot of trades uh, you know I don't know we don't have an example oh sorry I've been my head's probably been in the way most of the time um, man I lost my whole train of thought sorry moving my stop up let's say I, I'm, I'm interested I'm on a super small time frame and this wick tags me out you know, but my stop was in the green. Yeah, I made a couple dollars. That winner was not bigger than my loser, but I get back in. So, so overall, I'm, I'm in a bunch of, my wins at that point are small or big. I'm gonna make a little bit or I'm gonna make a lot depending on how far this thing wants to go up. So that mindset, this check, this reality is where you're locking in profits is actually a very important part. But if you're bag holding and you're not checking that other half of the trade, that is a very dangerous thing to do. You will dwindle your account away. You'll lock in that $3 happily and can't wait to tell everybody you don't go broke locking in profits, but you'll bag hold the next trade completely red, hoping it comes back up, hoping and praying it's not the next UGAS or DGAS, something that got completely delisted. 
Doesn't happen often, but it happens. HMNY didn't get well, went to OTC. Technically, it's not delisted as long as you're not on Robinhood. It just got cheaper and cheaper. Now it's fractions of a penny. Things don't have to come back up. So, again, the reality check is be careful when you're locking things in. Whatever your strategy is, you guys are real good about talking about the profits. You need to focus on those losses. And not just, I'll talk about a stop loss. It's a mental stop loss. Maybe I'll get out eventually. Uh, and then with that mental, I have a mental stop loss at, uh, let's say it's at 437. I'm going to mentally stop out at 436. You don't want to put your order on there. You're afraid of someone selling your order flow and just dropping down. You, want, you don't want manipulation. Fine. I, I can't even argue with that. I do that with futures contracts overnight. But I get out when that alert hits. And if you are doing this, here's my mental stop loss, and it, it tags. You mentally, they we're at that number. Check. Here we are. And you stay in. You need to address that first. It's very important that you do so. And if you like what you hear and you want more of these, again, hit that subscribe button and tell me down below, well, have you, how many times have you said that in your life? And are you bag holding? Has it worked out for you? Have you been able to keep your losses small while your winners are big? Scaling out, oh, while we're on the topic of when should you exit a trade, you know, my way again is trailing i don't mind going on the gain train last thing i'll leave you guys with here though is it's not a light switch it is not on or off it is not all in all out uh something i do i popularly is i scale so now some people actually just exit trades they'll say hey it pushed you, you had a, a solid day right here you bought this it finally turned around signs reversal you bought it. all the things you hear everyone say and it pushes up and then you think, we're up a little bit. So instead of trailing, you cut your position in half. You've locked in some profits. It's hard for that position to go red when you've already locked some in. Because not only does it need to go back to break even, it needs to go further and then further down for that position to actually drag you down to be in the red. Um, so whether you want to just go ahead and cold cut it, lock that thing out, or um, like I do, trail it. I trail it with half. All right, I bought 100 shares. I'm going to put a stop loss in for 50 then move it up. Got some green candles in. I'm going to etch that thing up like just a ratcheting wrench. I'm just going to just keep clicking it up, stair-stepping that thing up, trying to avoid any wicks to the downside. But that really eases the FOMO as well because let's say a, uh, let's just say it's this move right here. Sorry about the not saying there's going to be a chart in here. Pushes up, and now it tags out half. That stupid wick got you. You put your stop just below that wick and this one got you by the penny everyone's had it happen it it sucks it's super annoying but you're still in the trade that will ease fomo like you've never seen before in your life because you get to you get to lie to yourself <laughs> you, you get to tell yourself it's okay because it pushes up you're like all right i'm still in it we're still good i'm still making money not as much but i'm still making money let's say it just gaps down yeah it takes takes the red you're like all right well i already locks them in you just get to look at the bright side of that and ignore the red Ignore that it was ever there. <laughs> uh, so don't forget, it's not all in, all out. We can we have the ability to, to get out one share at a time, half, a third, whatever number makes you feel warm and fuzzy. And while I say that jokingly in those terms, psychology is so important. If it makes you feel warm and fuzzy and it's locking in profits, I'd say do it uh, because that will actually affect your future trades. You don't want one red trade just destroying the next five. So I'm going to end it here. Uh, again, guys, one more time. Hit that subscribe button and the bell. And importantly, let me know in the comments down below a popular saying you've heard. I can't believe I didn't make this one my first video uh, because this one actually, actually bugs me. Because uh, while it is so true, the habits you guys are doing from behind the scenes. What I've seen people do, I, I run a, a chat, uh, I've, I've been in multiple chats, and I just see people bag holding and saying this, and it that doesn't match, doesn't jive, it's not how it works. Uh, and if you're saying that, man, check that back end. The red candles, that's the important ones, because you will go broke, locking in $3, but riding another one down 18 like we just showed you. I'll end it here, guys. I will see you in the next video. I go live Sundays and Wednesdays. If you ever want to jump in, in that chat, ask me questions, that's when I do it for you guys. I'll see you there.